so today we're talking about radical um, exponents. So it's important first that you understand what a radical exponent is. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for my marker. So a radical exponent, a number raised to a rational exponent is equivalent to a radical. For example, a square root, cube, or higher root. So a rational exponent is a fraction. So rational is fraction, radical is root. Two R words that are kind of confusing, but that's what they mean. So x to the power 1 divided by n is just the nth root of x for any n greater than 1. So x to the power 1 third is equivalent to the third root of x. So you write root x like this, and if it's anything other than a square root, sorry that 3 wasn't very nice, then you write it right there, okay? So that's how you draw a third root of x. So y to the power 1 over 5 would give you the fifth root of y. So you draw y with your normal root and then put the 5 in the corner there. So if you have 27 to the 1 third, what this means is you take the third root of 27. So what this means, so think about it, a square root means that something times something equals that number. So a cube root means that the same number three times will equal 27. So what is that number, that one, the exact same number, something times something times something will equal 27. Okay, so think about that. So 81 to the 1 quarter is uh, 81 to the 4th root. So put a root and then a 4 there. So that means something times something times something times something equals 81. So the same number multiplied 4 times will equal 81. That's what that means. Okay? So that is the first rule there. Okay, and it can go both ways. You can go from a root to an, uh, radical, a rational exponent, or from a rational exponent or a fraction exponent to a root. Okay. We also have this rule that if you have a numerator other than 1, so a, a number, we'll call it m, x to the power m over n, can be written as x to the power m times 1 over n. Okay, that's using our exponent laws that we learned in grade 9. Which can be written as x to the m to the nth root. Okay? So the nth root of the mth, mth power. It's kind of a weird thing to say. So x uh, to the power 2 thirds is the same as saying x squared all to the power 1 third. So that's like saying x squared and then taking the third root of that. Okay? So y to the 4 fifth is the same thing as saying y to the power 4, then taking that to the 1 fifth. So you have y to the power 4, and then you take the fifth root of that. So for example, 27 to the 2 thirds would be 27 squared to the power of 3. That's how it can be rewritten. Okay? So, we also have to keep in mind our exponent laws that still apply, even with these rational exponents that turn into radicals. So, for example, if you have x to the power 1 half times x to the power 1 quarter, you add the exponents, okay? So, that's x to the power 1 half, sorry, so 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4. So that's x to the power of 3 over 4, which could be rewritten as the fourth root of x to the power of 3. Okay? Um, so if you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. So x to the power 3 over 5 minus a third. So you need a common denominator of 15. So 9 over 15 minus 5 over 15. So you get x to the power 4 over 15, which is the 15th root of x to the power 4. Okay, the power of a power law says that you multiply the exponents when you're taking the power of a power. 
So this would just be x to the power 1 over 12, or the 12th root of x. Okay? Negative exponents still work the same way. Remember, you flip the base. So x to the negative 1 half just means that you take 1 over x to the power 1 half. Okay? Be careful not to flip the fraction. Okay? Don't flip the exponent. Sometimes people get confused. Uh, but that is not what you do. The negative exponent means that you flip the base, okay? And that gets rid of the negative, but the exponent, that, that doesn't change. It just, you just take out the negative. So x to the power 3 over 4, negative 3 over 4, would be 1 over x to the power 3 over 4. Okay? So again, careful not to flip the uh, exponent. So remember, if you're using a calculator, you have to put brackets around the rational exponent. So if you're doing like 27 to the power 1 third, for instance, you would have to put brackets 1 and then do divided by 3. So that's how you can solve 27 to the 1 third, 27 to the power 1 divided by 3, or sometimes it's this little x to the power y button. So you can try that. The answer is 3. You can try it on your calculator and make sure you get the right answer. Okay, so now the rest of the note basically is just a bunch of examples, I think, unless there might be one little thing on the back here that's mostly examples. Oh yeah, we have one couple more little points here. So odd roots can have negative bases. This is because when you're multiplying uh, numbers together an odd number of times, you can get a negative result. So for instance, uh, this means that something three times together equals minus 27. So therefore that number would be negative 3. Because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. That works. But even roots cannot have negative bases. Okay? So here there's a positive base, the fourth root of 16. So something 4 times multiplied equals 16. So that would be 2 would be the answer, right? Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. But there's no way that you can multiply something together an even number of times to get a negative number. Because if the, num if the number is positive, you'll get a positive. If the number is negative, then multiplying it four times would end up with a positive as well. So odd roots can have a negative base, but even roots cannot have a negative base. Okay, so let's go forward and do the examples here. So 49 to the power 1 half. Okay, so you can do it in your calculator, or you can just change this into square root 49. Notice you don't need to put the 2 here, because this is just implied that it's a square root. So you should know that that answer is 7. Okay, negative 8 to the 1 third. So again, you're thinking something multiplied together 3 times has to equal negative 8. So you can use, you know, your own knowledge to do that that's negative 2 or you can put that into your calculator, which would be, you would put brackets negative eight to the power one divided by three, or again, instead of a little up arrow, you might have an X to the power Y button. 10,000 to the power one quarter, so that's something being multiplied four times to get 10,000, so that answer is 10. Okay, 27 to the two thirds, I like to think about this, okay, so you take the one-third part first, and then you square it. So 27 to the one-third, think of something that that number, when you multiply it three times, blank, time, blank, time, blank, that same number equals 27. So that is three, so 27 to the one-third is three, and then, and then you're squaring that number, so the solution is just nine, okay? Now, what about negative 27 to the 4 thirds? So, I would separate this out and do negative 27 in brackets to the 1 third, and then that result, take it to the power 4, okay? I do the denominator first, uh, because it's simpler, because that gets it down to a smaller number, and then you take that smaller number and make it big. If you do the 4 first, you're getting some really humongous number and then making it smaller. So you try to make it smaller first. So that is just negative 3 to the power 4, and that is positive 81. 
Okay, 16 to the negative 0.75. So that is 1 over 16 to the 3 over 4. Okay, so I flip the base to get rid of the negative, and then I turn this into a fraction. Okay, so that gives us 1 over 16 to the 1 over 4, and then cube that. So that is 2 cubed, which is 8. Okay, because 1 over 16, think about it, what is it that 4 times multiplies to 16? Well, it's 2. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake there. It should be 1 over 2 cubed, and that's 1 over 8. I apologize. Um, so this is a 1, obviously, and then this is a 2. So then it becomes 1 over 2, and then you cube that. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8. Sorry, I know I shouldn't say obviously. Um, anytime, though, you're rooting or squaring 1, the result is still just 1, because it doesn't mind. No matter how many times you multiply 1 by itself, or divide 1 by itself, it's still just 1. 1 times 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 1 is just 1. Or 1 divided by 1 divided by 1 divided by 1 divided by 1. I can do that forever, but still just get 1. So that's why I said obviously, but it uh, might not be obvious to everybody. Okay, now we get into these uh, tricky ones because there's so many things going on. So first thing you have to notice about this is that the base of 8 is consistent throughout. So this is 8, 8, and 8. So don't try to solve all of these things individually and then multiply them. That's way too much work. You want to turn these all into rational exponents so then you can use uh, your laws to solve this. So let's change this into 8 to the 5 over 6 times 8 to the 1 half, right? So that's a square root, divided by 8 to the 5 thirds. So this just turns into 8 to the power 5, 6, plus 1 half, and then we're going to subtract 5 over 3. Okay, so now you just got to know your fractions to get a common denominator. Okay, and the common denominator, when you do that and add them all together, you get negative 2 over 6, so 8 to the negative 1 third. Okay, so that is just 1 over 8 to the power of 1 third, which is 1 over 2. Okay, so the 1 over 8 is because of the negative exponent, and then the 1 third is 2 because what multiplied 3 times gives you 8? It's 2. Okay, so 25x squared to the power of 1 half, use the exponent laws to get just 25, oh sorry, oh see I almost made that mistake. Notice that there's brackets here, and the 1 half then applies to everything in the brackets. So really you can rewrite this as a square root, you have to square root everything that's in there. So you get just 5x. Okay, 32 to the power of negative 3 over 5. So first I'll flip this, so it's 1 over 32 to the power of 3 over 5. Okay, and then I'll take 1 over 32 to the power of a fifth, and then I'm going to do that cubed, because remember I want to make it smaller first, then bigger. So what multiplied 5 times gives you 32? Uh, well, that's 2, so this is 1 over 2 to the power of 3. 1 to the power of 3 is 1, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, you get 1 8. Okay, 27 over 64y cubed to the power of 2 over 3. Well, 27 to the power of 2 over 3 is 9. We already figured that out in a different question, or you can use your calculator to figure that out. 64 to the power of 2 over 3 is 16, okay? So either you can do that in your calculator, try it, um, or you can think 64 to the 1 3rd, and then square it. So 64 to the 1 3rd is 4, 4 squared is 16, and then you get y squared, because 3 times 2 thirds is just 2. Alright, 64 to the 2 thirds, you can rewrite it as 64 to the 1 3rd, remember I'm trying to make it smaller first, then squared, so what multiplied 3 times gives us 64? It's 4 squared, so you get 16. 
Okay, 8 over 27 to the negative 1 third. Well, first I want to flip the base. So 27 over 8 instead of 8 over 27. Okay, and then I do each one, take the third root of each one. So 27 to the 1 third is 3, and 8 to the power of 1 third is 2. So there's your final answer. Okay, so just remember, whatever this denominator is, that's telling you what has to be multiplied three times to get to the, the number. Okay, that's what that means. And that a negative exponent means flip the base. So there's a lot of short examples here, and I know I went through each one relatively quickly, but that's the uh, purpose of these videos, is that you're able to rewatch them um, as many times as you want. If you have trouble understanding a specific one, then put a star next to it and highlight it, and then I can help you with the ones that you specifically had trouble with, um, instead of having to review the whole concept, if you understood part of the concept already. So uh, those are the laws. You have lots, you'll have lots of practice, practice, practice until you get this right because then we'll be using it in our later work. So thanks for watching and I hope you learned lots.